Hi, Genevieve Jacobs from Region Media in the National Portrait Gallery in a room full of glowing Medici-esque portraits of the powerful, of royalty, of billionaires. It's Ralph Hyman's exhibition and we are standing in front of the very first official portrait of the woman who had become Queen Mary of Denmark, our own Mary Donaldson, in the Fredericksburg Palace. It's probably as good a place to start as any. Ralph, tell us about this extraordinary portrait which is so much more than a photorealistic depiction of a young woman on the verge of an extraordinary adventure? Well, it was uh, begun in 2005 when uh, Princess Mary was princess for one year and she was actually pregnant with her first child at the time. So she was new to the role and I met her uh, in the palace and we, dis we had numerous meetings and discussions about how she should re be represented as this kind of modern day princess. And um, we came up with this very personal sort of uh, story which reflects her journey from her origins in Hobart, her hometown, to the palace in you know, Denmark. So it was just an incredible adventure and I was working closely with the Danish National Museum to tell this, this narrative uh, portrait of her. And, and in fact, there is so much going on in this portrait. So we are in a room in the Fredericksburg Palace. It all looks very opulent. She's looking out. There's light slanting through the windows. I love the detail of what's reflected in the mirror because although Denmark is very much a maritime no nation, yeah. it's not Copenhagen, is it? No, it's Hobart. It's Constitution Dock in Hobart. So uh, I altered the paintings that pre existing in the room and actually some of the architecture to really create this window through... Uh, the view through the mirror, um, as though you see Princess Mary from, from the back and you can see her, uh, uh, symbolic of her past and her origins uh, uh, and her birth city of Hobart. So it's a way of just telling of her journey to the present moment. And she's looking out towards the window, towards the outside world, within the confines of the palace. So just to, just to sort of explain a little bit about her reality and her life. Many of the portraits here are very powerful people. We see, for example, Judy Dench, and you talk about that being a painting that's about memory. Yes. King Charles is not far from here with yes. oak trees and the nature that he's always loved and advocated for, for reflected in the, the polished surface of a beautiful piano in Dumfries House. Yes. So these are they're beautiful and exquisite portraits, but they also take an enormous amount of time and research. Absolutely. Could you really concisely take us through your process? Yes, well, a lot of it is collaboration, discussion, research. I read biographies. Um, half of the work is in the preparation. And um, with royal portraits, um, it's, it's about uh, w working with the equerries and the, um, the private secretaries and, and eventually with the royal family member to really you know, discuss the ideas and everything has to sort of be verbally approved. And, um, but I, and I, my approach to portraiture is narrative based, so it's about telling a story. So the, the first challenge is which story to tell. And with Prince Charles, I wanted really to focus on his passions uh, for the environment, for you know, the preservation of uh, architecture, um, historical architecture. And, and so they, you know, it's about crafting the story that's really important. And that is often done in collaboration with the subject. Joanna Gilmore, the, the senior curator here at the National Portrait Gallery, a lot of what Ralph's just said goes straight to the essence of what portraiture is about, isn't it? it it's not simply a representation, it's about telling a story. Talk to us about how this exhibition came together and, and why you feel it's so significant. Well, Ralph's an artist with a very long as association with the National Portrait Gallery and our responsibility here, our remit, is to celebrate portraiture in all its multiple different <laughs> shapes and sizes and we do that, we look at the best exponents of portraiture, whether they're historical or contemporary, whether they're Australian, whether they're international and with Ralph you get all of that in the one package in a way. So he's an artist who is working in a very old world kind of way but with a very new world sensibility. He's uh, internationally sought after portrait painter who happens to have been born in Sydney and for that reason as someone who's made a speciality of portraiture which is really quite rare in the art world only doing portraits only doing portraits on commission is really quite a rarity and for that reason he's someone who came to the attention of the NPG very early on <laughs> in Ralph's career and actually two of his earliest major portraits, um, painting of Tom Uren, um, former Labor Party politician, and the painting of um, Justice Michael Kirby, or former High Court Justice Michael Kirby, um, both from the 1990s are among the earliest major works that the gallery acquired. So in terms of 
you know, how long it's taken us to do an exhibition of Ralph's work. Well, it's, you know, it's getting to close to 20 years now. <laughs> I think that's how long uh, his association with the gallery has, has lasted. And in fact, we're standing in front of the painting of, of Queen Mary, then Princess Mary. And actually the National Portrait Gallery here was instrumental in the creation of this artwork in a way because it was our inaugural director, Andrew, who recommended uh, Ralph to um, the Museum of National History in Denmark and they chose him to paint the first official portrait of the then Crown Princess and this has opened up all sorts of doors for Ralph, not just in terms of his career, but stylistically as well. This is such a significant painting for a lot of the reasons that Ralph has, has been speaking about. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love about this exhibition is that we can also see the drawings that you do beforehand, the preparatory drawings. Yes, yes. We can see your mind at work. Yeah. I'm just going to finish by asking you what you think a portrait needs to do. What should it be? Well, for me, I have a very holistic approach to portraiture. So the idea of the portrait artist is to somehow crystallise within a single image, a, a timeless image, uh, some a representation of the intrinsic essence of the subject, which is no easy task. And so that's why I try to envelop it in a story, in a narrative. Um, and uh, but it's it, it really is something that if you when you paint it you have to think how this is going to last through the generations because this is there are very few things in life that you paint for posterity and portrait is one of them and so and and very often people only sit for one so you really have to imagine if this were to be the image uh, of that subject to endure through the ages what would that be like so I try that's my goal <laughs> and uh, I hope uh, some of them do resonate and have that sort of um, quality that yes through the years. So these galleries are absolutely full of princes, of plutocrats, of politicians, of extraordinary figures to, into whose personalities we, we see real insight and real depth and real thought. You don't however have ages to view this exhibition. Tell us about the opening hours and, and the time that we've actually got to come and examine, Jo. We're open every day of the year except for Christmas Day so uh, the exhibition's on until the 27th of May uh, so from 10 to 5 every day between now and the 27th of May you'll be able to see the exhibition. And do so, it's <laughs> fabulous. These are the, the, the Renaissance masters of the future. I'm Genevieve <laughs> Jacobs and this is Region Media.